Uh, so for the documentation on that, we go to text template, godoc.org text template, and um, and then we could go through here and we could read about it. And it's kind of fun to read, you know, just to like see what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. But if we come down here, here's a list of actions, arguments, and pipelines, our evaluations of data defined in detail in the corresponding sections below. So we could do comments in our template like that, or we could just do HTML comments, right? And there's a little bit more information about comments. So this will remove, you know, preceding and trailing spaces from the text if we have those dashes. So it might be interesting to put in, you know, into a, you know, experiment with this, put into pass in some data with spaces and then add those and see if it gets rid of the spaces. I'm kind of curious. So just to show you like the experimentation on that. So the data I'm passing in is 42 and XI. I'm going to pass in just S colon equals and and then up here, I'm going to pass in t colon equals. I'll try a raw string literal. And so I'll pass in t here. And I'll pass in s here. And, uh, and then those go to my templates, and they just print out like this. And in my templates, Oh, those are the those are the ones that were created. I'm like, uh, what? Get rid of those. And my templates. They're my templates. So let's run this first and just see what happens. And look at the files. Right. So there are those big spaces. Right. So the spaces were included. Correct. Let's get rid of those. And now let's do this. Because this was telling us, actually looks kind of cute. Actually looks like a gopher. Aww. But this was telling us, if you have that little dash, right, a white space trim preceding and following, it says something about Right? I mean, it's for comments, but maybe this will work with anything. Just put those dashes in. So let's run it and see what happens. Boom. Doesn't like it. So it would need to be a comment for that to work. All right. I thought there was a way to do that, but apparently that's not it. That's how we learn experimentation. So here we have the one, the default textual representation, the same as would be printed by front print line, the value of the pipeline is copied to output. Right? Pipeline is the pipeline of data. And, and this comes from Unix where you could pipe the output of one process into the next process. Have you seen that in Unix? On the terminal, shell bash, right? You say this process runs and pipe it to the next process and you put the vertical bar. So I think that's where they get the phrase pipeline. You could do if statements. If the value of the pipeline is empty, no output is generated, otherwise it's executed. The template is executed. T1 is the template, right? The empty values are false, zero, uh, that. Uh, uh, so those are empty values. Dot is unaffected. If pipeline T1 else T0, if the value of the pipeline is empty, T0 is executed. Otherwise, T1 is executed. Dot is unaffected. If these are like different templates we could create, but we have, you know, uh, let's just see if we could do it with if and see what happens. So experimenting, and I'm going to pass in. True, false, uh, 
and then come to my templates and do if dot this ran and then what's the end of it and and this is the about default This ran on default, and all we got here is here's the data from about. And so if it ran on about, it would have been this ran on about, but it didn't. So do we pass false into about? And about got false. So the if logic worked to test stuff. What if we didn't pass anything in? Now, neither of them ran, All right? So it has to have data to run. So that's like, okay, if, and we could do if else. And let's just do, this is a uh, about, and this one is, default, and then we could pass true and false back in. So default should run, about should not. About, this is the else, ran for about, and default ran, right? So we got the true, false. So we got if, if else, and if else, else if, if, else if. And we could range over the pipeline, so we already saw range over the pipeline. Or, right, something else. So range, but if there's nothing to range, then do this deal. We can also define a template and then uh, execute data. We'll see that in a sec second. So we could have templates that call templates. And then different arguments down here. So uh, good to read through this stuff. And I know this is a little bit of a lengthy thing, but let's take a look at the first text here. Package template implements data-driven templates for generating textual output. To generate HTML output, see package HTML template, which has the same interface as this package, but automatically secures HTML output against certain attacks. Templates are executed by applying them to a data structure. Annotations in the template refer to elements of the data structure typically a field of a struct or a key in a map. So they're recommending that you use structs so that you could know what data you're putting next to the dot or a key in a map so you know what data is going next to the dot to control execution and derive values to be displayed. Execution of the template walks the structure and sets the cursor represented by a period and call dot to the value at the current location in the structure as execution proceeds. So that's where the dot comes in. The input text for a template is UTF-8 encoded text in any format. Actions, data evaluations, or control structures are delimited by brackets, braces, sorry. All text outside actions is copied to the output unchanged. Except for raw strings, actions may not span new lines. 
although comments can. Once parsed, a template may be executed safely in parallel, although if parallel execution share a writer, the output may be interleaved. This is, this is a trivial example that prints 17 items are made of wool. So we have a struct with two fields, material and count. We create use a composite literal to create a value of that struct, type in, in, uh, inventory, and we call it sweaters. Sweater would probably be a better name. I'd use sweaters for many items in inventory. We do template new here to create a template called test, and then into that template, parse dot count items are made of material, right? So we're passing data in, and parse looks like you just apply that right to a template. So this creates a template. Once you have the template, it has a method parse. So it's like parse template, parse glob. Um, you know, here's a different one. And then we get TMPL. And we do TMPL execute to standard out in sweaters. So there's different ways you could use functions from and methods and values from package template. More intri in intricate examples appear below. Talks about text and spaces. So uh, by default, all text between actions is copied verbatim when the template is executed. For example, the string items are made of in the example above appears on center output when the program is run. Items are made of, right? That string right there with spaces and everything comes out just as it is. However, to aid in formatting template source code, if an action is left delimiter by default, is followed immediately by a minus sign, a ASCII space character. So maybe if I had spaces, that would have worked. All trailing white space is trimmed from the t immediately preceding text. Similarly, if the right delimiter is preceded by a space and minus sign, all leading white space is trimmed. In these trim markers, the ASCII space uh, must be present. In these trim markers, the ASCII space must be present. Uh, this parses as an action containing the, the number negative 3. For instance, when executing a template whose source is, the generated output would be this. Because it got rid of this space, and got rid of that space right there. So I'm kind of curious after reading that. Like we had our example where was it this one? Do we change it? So we'll just copy the skin. And we'll do it in O2. And uh, in main, we'll pass in s colon equals. Here is text with space. And then here, t colon equal. Here is a raw string literal. Okay. And I'll pass in t. And then let's try that again. But this time, we will do. dot space dot this one's default and let's run it this is O2 still didn't blow up so the raw string literal is the same and and that one is the same <laughs> But, you know, what would have happened if we just put text in there? It's kind of funny. Like, why did it take it out? Maybe if it's just one, because it talked about just one. But it seems like it should be both. 
So let's look at about. No, it's still there. Anyhow. So it takes some figuring out. Yeah, why wouldn't that get rid of the space? Seems like it should do it. Uh, 